All right, now we're going to talk about table J. And table J is kind of the last piece that we need to put in in order to understand the kind of cumulative piece of this unit. So table J shows us activity. What the heck do I mean? Well, let's look at it, okay? It's literally called the activity series. And it's got some arrows, most active to least active. So you can see I just kind of zoomed in a little bit so you could see what's there. And we have a metal side, which is much larger, and an itty bitty non-metal side. So you can see it's divided into a metal side and a non-metal side. We're going to focus on the metal side first. Okay. Metals that are closer to the top are more active. You don't have to remember this because literally there's an arrow that says most active. Okay. Now for metals, more active means better at losing electrons. How do I know? Just look at the periodic table. Metals have a whole bunch of positive charges. So losing electrons is oxidation. So for metals, more active means more likely to be oxidized. So when we think at the top, we should be thinking oxidation. And when we think at the bottom, we should be thinking reduction. So what happens in reactions? Well, strong, more active metals, they literally don't like to be alone. They're bossy. They demand partners. They only like to be in compounds they will kick out metals below them. So the strong ones at the top who love oxidation, who are super good at it, just can't handle if another metal is in a compound, they will take its place. So here's our metals, remember oxidation to reduction. We have typically uncombined metals that are neutral and combined metals or ions that have a positive charge. If the uncombined metal or the neutral one is at the top, meaning higher, it doesn't matter if it's one above, okay? A metal on table J will react spontaneously, kick out a metal ion that's below it. It says, excuse me, you do not get to be with a partner. I am the bossy one. So the ones on the top are bossy and they will kick out anyone who is combined in a compound. They do not like to see other people in compounds. Mm -mm, negative. So the metals that are combined and then a metal that's above them, sees them combined, mm -mm, takes its place. So let me try and make that make sense. So we're gonna do it by looking at some reactions. All right, so here's a question. It says, according to table J, which of the following will react spontaneously? So here we have this reaction. So let's work through it. So what's in our reaction? All right, so we have H, correct? So that's right here. All right, and you see H is a positive charge. So that means I have H that's positive. What will react spontaneously with it? Anything that does not have a charge. Okay, so you can't have, we're not talking about using table J for charges and charges. So I can already, based on that, get rid of this and get rid of this. So I'm not even gonna look at it. Also this, does this make sense? It's not gonna react with itself. So let's look at where Fe is. All right, so let's find Fe. Here it is right here. What do we notice? That Fe is above it. So Fe is above H2. It is more active. So Fe is gonna say, mm -mm, I don't think so. You don't get to be the ion. You don't get to be in the compound. I am going to take your place. So our answer is Fe. All right, which atom ion pair will cobalt oxidize spontaneously um, under standard conditions? So let's work through it. So first of all, what do we need? Well, we need a pair that has one with a charge and one without. So that means you are gone already. All of them involve cobalt and cobalt has no charge. So let's just kind of highlight cobalt in a special way. Now I'm going to switch colors and we're going to look for the other ones. So we have Fe, that's positive. We have Pb, that's positive. And we have Cr, that's positive. So which one is going to react? Well, I could play this game. One of these things is not like the others. Or I could realize that CO is going to be able to kick out anything 
that is a uh, positive ion below it. Because CO is like, mm -mm, you don't get to be in a compound. That's my job. Get out. Okay. So what is our answer? There we go. Okay, it says decide if a reaction will occur. So this is deciding if something is spontaneous or not. When is it spontaneous? When the metal with no charge is higher than the metal with a positive charge. And when it has a positive charge, it's in the compound. So when I'm looking at this one, it will be spontaneous if Mg is higher than H. Is it? Yes. When will this be spontaneous? If Ag is higher than Cu, is it? No. So Ag wants to kick out Cu and Cu is like, mm -mm, remember, I'm higher than you. I get to stay. What about Al and H? Is Al higher than H? Is Al able to come in and kick out H and say, I get to be with the compound? Yes, absolutely. All right, what about this one? Now, it's written in reverse order, so be careful. PB is the one that's alone, and AU. Is PB able to come in and kick out AU? Yes, absolutely. All right, look at this one. Is AU able to come in and kick out LI? <laughs> no, LI is at the top. Nobody gets to kick out LI. All right, and then our last one, we have H and we have SN. Is SN able to come in and kick out H? Yes, absolutely. All right, so which of the when the following pairs of elements are reacted, which element will oxidize and which one will reduce? Okay, so do you remember that at the top of this table is oxidation? Those metals are better at losing. And at the bottom is reduction. Those metals are not better at losing. Okay. So find Mg and Cu. Okay, you got them? Which one is higher? Well, that one's oxidized. Okay. Uh, let's look at the next pair. Which one is higher? Well, Li doesn't get any higher than that, right? So that means that one will be oxidized. The other one reduced. All right, find Na and Ca. Which one is higher? Ca, just one higher, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so that one's oxidized. Find Mn and Ba. Which one is higher? Yep, Ba, so that means Ba is oxidized. Find Ni and Pb. Which one is higher? Ni, so Ni is oxidized. Find Na and Cu. Which one is higher? Yep, Na. So Na will be oxidized. Find Cr and Sr. Hmm. Which one is higher? Sr. So that means Sr is oxidized. And then our last pair, find Au and Ag. Which one is higher? Yeah, Ag, so that means Ag is oxidized. Okay, so remember the table's divided into metal and nonmetal, so now let's look at the nonmetal side. So for nonmetals, the ones that are closer to the top are more active, just like with metals. But for nonmetals, being more active means better at gaining electrons, and gaining electrons is reduction. So if they're more active, they're more likely to be reduced, okay? So what happens in reactions? Well, strong or more active nonmetals don't like to be alone. They're bossy. They demand partners. They only like to be in compounds, and they will kick out nonmetals below them. Okay, so here we're looking at the nonmetal side. Remember, reduction for the higher ones, oxidation for the lower ones. So the higher ones are going to be uncombined nonmetals and neutral, and the combined nonmetals will be lower and they'll be ions and have a negative charge. So the uncombined will kick out the combined if they're higher. So a nonmetal on table J will react spontaneously with a nonmetal ion that is below it. 
So what the heck do I mean? Let's check out a, an example. Ready? All right. According to table J, which will react spontaneously? Well, you can see our BR has a negative charge. So that means automatically, what should I be able to cross out? This and this. Because it's not ion and ion. It's neutral metal with an ion. All right, now our next step, find BR. Well, here's BR. So this is the one in the question, right? And I'm comparing it to I2 and F2. So what will be able, remember this is the one that was negative, right? So what will be able to kick this negative out and take its place and say, I don't think so, I get to be in the compound. Well, something that's above it. So that would be this one. We're going to use this information when we look at electrochemical cells. So there's two types of electrochemical cells, which we will be talking about. Oxidation happens at the anode. So do you see how using table J is going to help us figure that out? Okay. So in a uh, voltaic or galvanic cell, the higher metal is going to be the anode. And then in an electrolytic cell, it's going to be the lower one. We'll talk about why that happens. But that's table J, which you need to know to understand electrochemical cells, which is next. All right. I hope you learned something new today.